Need a new playmat? Playing with Power MTG now has merchandise. Go to playwithpowermtg.com to order playmats and t-shirts with more merch on the way. All sales help us grow the channel. You can also support us by purchasing on TCG Player through our affiliate links in the description. We love TCG Player because it gives the best prices online and still supports local game stores. Finally, you can support us directly through Patreon. You'll get access to our community, early access to videos, and even exclusive videos not available anywhere else. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Another round is here, and we are showing off two new builds to the channel, and a budget deck as well. Before we get into that, we wanted to mention that we have started a CEDH webcam league on our Patreon Discord server. The league runs until the end of May, and there are prizes involved. All patrons at all levels are qualified to play in the league. We've seen some awesome games in the league, and... This week's announcement has definitely shaken up the meta. Please consider becoming a patron and joining us in the league. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Garrett, piloting the four color pairing of Akiri Line Slinger and Kaidel, chosen of Krufix. This deck leverages combos and storm turns through the use of its key card, Jeskai Ascendancy. Garrett's opening hand contains a Faithless Looting, Blue Sun Zenith, Preordain, Mystical Tutor, Memory Jar, Ancient Tomb, and an Exotic Orchard. Next, we have Folger, Paladin Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. This deck is a big mana storm deck leveraging Selvala's mana ability and draw ability to dig for the win. Folger's opening hand contains a Beast Within, Scale Up, Phyrexian Soul Gorger, Sheltering Ancient, Carpet of Flowers, Prismatic Vista, and a Forest. After that, we have special guest Tim from the CEDH Nexus. CEDH Nexus plays paper CEDH games over webcam, much like our league. Tonight, Tim pilots Kess, Dissident Mage. This version of Consultation Kess is a budget version, totaling only $500 and is still a force to be reckoned with at the CDH table. Tim's opening hand contains a Manifold Key, Mana Vault, Opt, Cephalid Coliseum, Cyclonic Rift, Cascade Bluffs, and a Brainstorm. Finally, we have Scott, piloting Tassiger, the Golden Fang. This version of Tassiger seeks to use Polymorph and a Tide Spout Tyrant for an infinite combo win. Scott's opening hand contains an Eldritch Evolution, Chrome Mox, Demir Signet, Mana Crypt, Narset Parter of Veils, and a Ponder. Without further ado, let's kick off this interesting introspection of Invigorating Invocation. Scott wins the Snakes on a Plane trivia game and gets to start us off. Scott plays a Mana Crypt for turn. He casts a Demir Signet. He casts a Chrome Mox, exiling Preordain. He casts a Ponder. He looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws a card. He plays a Nurturing Peatland for turn, and, hand all dumped out, passes the turn. Garrett plays an Exotic Orchard for turn, and passes. Folger plays a Forest for turn. He casts a Carpet of Flowers. With no islands on the board yet, he gives a turn to Tim. Tim plays a Cascade Bluffs for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Mana Vault. He taps the Mana Vault to cast Manifold Key. He activates a key with his floating mana to untap his vault. Tim ends his turn. During his upkeep, Scott loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes 3 damage. He plays a Tropical Island for turn. He casts Narset, Parter of Veils. He activates Narset, looking at the top four and revealing a Felwar Stone. Scott ends his turn. At the end of Scott's turn, Garrett casts Mystical Tutor, fetching up a Green Sun Zenith onto the top of his library. Garrett plays an Ancient Tomb for turn. He taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast Green Sun Zenith for two. He fetches up a Sky Shroud Elf onto the battlefield and shuffles Green Suns back into his library. Garrett gives a turn to Folger. During his first main phase, Folger adds a green through his Carpet of Flowers. He plays a Forest for turn. He casts his Commander, Sylvala, Heart of the Wilds. Folger passes. On his turn, Tim plays a Watery Grave into play untapped, paying 2 life. He cracks his Lotus Petal to help cast his Commander, Kess, Dissident Mage. Sylvala triggers, and Tim goes to draw a card, but everyone reminds him that Narset is out, and he can only draw one card per turn. With nothing else, Tim ends his turn. Scott plays an Underground Sea for turn. He delves one to help cast his own commander, Tassiger, the Golden Fang. Savala triggers, and Scott draws a card. He activates Narset, looking at the top four and revealing a Pact of Negation. Scott ships the turn to Garrett. On his turn, Garrett taps his Ancient Tomb to help cast his commander, Kaidel, chosen of Krufix. Garrett passes. Folger plays a Forest for turn and passes to Tim. Tim plays a Cephalid Coliseum for turn and passes to Scott. During his upkeep, Scott loses his Mana Crypt trigger and takes three damage. He plays a Verdict Catacombs for turn. 
He passes. At the end of Scott's turn, Tim casts Opt, scrying one and drawing a card. Garrett starts off his turn by tapping Kaidel and his ancient tomb, filtering some of it through his Sky Shroud Elf to cast Selvala, Explorer Return. With that, Garrett passes. At the end of Garrett's turn, Folger cast Beats Within, targeting Narset. In response, Scott activates Tassiker, milling two and choosing Tim. Tim chooses to give him Isochron Scepter. Scott activates Tassiker again, milling two and choosing Tim a second time. Tim gives him Swan Song. Scott then casts Pact of Negation, targeting Beast Within. Folger responds by casting Veil of Summer. Veil resolves, Folger draws a card, then Pact of Negation resolves, but doesn't counter Beast Within, meaning Scott will still have to pay for it on its upkeep. Then Beast Within resolves, Narset is destroyed, and Scott creates a 3-3 Beast. During Folger's upkeep, Tim casts an overloaded Cyclonic Rift. This is very bad for Scott, because if his mana rocks are bounced, he won't be able to pay for Pact and he will lose the game. So in response, Scott cracks his Verdant Catacombs for a Watery Grey and to play untapped, paying two life. He casts Swan Song, targeting the Rift. In response, Tim exiles a card from his hand to cast Misdirection, changing the target of Swan Song to Misdirection itself. Misdirection resolves, Swan Song fizzles, and Cyclonic Rift resolves, bouncing all of his opponent's non-land permanents. Folger plays a Forest for turn. He recasts Carpet of Flowers. He moves to a second main and adds two green through his carpet. He recasts Selvala. He then follows up by casting Sheltering Ancient, triggering Selvala and drawing a card. All through, Folger passes. During his draw step, Tim takes a damage through his Mana Ball. He taps his Cephalid Colosseum to cast Cyclonic Rift from its graveyard through Cast, not overloaded, and targeting Selvala. Selvala bounces, and Tim follows up with a Worn Power Stone. With that, Tim passes. During Scott's upkeep, he cannot pay for his Pack Trigger and loses the game. On his turn, Garrett plays a Gemstone Caverns. He recasts Sky Shroud Elf. He taps his Ancient Tomb, filtering it through the Elf to cast Faithless Looting. He draws two and discards two. Garrett passes. During his upkeep, Folger puts a 1-1 counter on Garrett's Sky Shroud Elf through Sheltering Ancient. In his main phase, he has one green through his carpet. He plays a Prismatic Vista for turn. He casts his commander, Selvala. He cracks his Prismatic Vista for a forest. He casts a Phyrexian Soul Gorger, triggering Selvala and drawing a card. He attacks Tim with a Sheltering Agent and passes the turn. During his draw step, Tim takes damage through his Mana Balm. He taps his Colosseum to cast Op from his graveyard through Cass. He scries one and draws a card. He casts Dockside Extortionist. Extortionist enters and Tim creates two treasures. Tim passes. Garrett starts off his turn by tapping his Ancient Tomb and filtering it through the Elf to cast Jeskai Ascendancy. This card is a powerhouse in this deck, so Tim responds by casting Mystical Dispute, countering the spell. Garrett plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He cracks it for a Hallowed Fountain into play untapped, paying two life. Garrett ends the turn. During his upkeep, Folger stacks his cumulative upkeep triggers accordingly and sacks Sheltering Ancient to Phyrexian Soul Gorger. In his first main phase, he adds one green from his carpet. He plays a Forest for turn. He casts a Phyrexian Dreadnought. Dreadnought enters, Folger draws through Selvala, and with the Dreadnought Sacrifice trigger on the stack, Folger taps Selvala for 12 before sacrificing the Dreadnought to itself. He uses some of his floating mana to cast Shared Summons. He fetches up Voice of Many and Quarian Ranger. He casts Voice of Many, drawing two cards. He casts Quarian Ranger. He returns a forest through Quarian Ranger to untap Selvala. He taps Selvala for an additional eight mana. He then casts Green Sun Zenith for four. He fetches up a Teamer Sabertooth onto the battlefield and shuffles Green Suns back into his library. He casts a Woodland Bellower. Bellower resolves and Folger fetches up a Wirewood Symbiote onto the battlefield. He demonstrates a loop of using Wirewood to untap Selvala, then using Teamer Sabertooth to bounce and recast the Symbiote, netting mana, and then repeating it to get infinite. He bounces the Soul Gorger to his hand through Teamer and then recasts it over and over again, triggering Selvala's ability to draw his entire deck. He then casts every creature in his library and then casts Finale of Devastation where X equals 50 giving all of his creatures plus 50, plus 50 in haste, and attacks with everything for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, I've got to say, that game was ridiculous. There were a lot of really cool commanders and atypical builds doing some cool stuff at the table. Congrats to Folger on his win. You saw that Selvala is the crux of the deck, and his opponents did everything they could to stop him from going off in one turn. In the end, Folger saw his opportunity and sequenced everything correctly in order to get to his win. 
Tim's deck was pulling more than its weight at the table, even for a budget build. He was a great pilot, but in the end, he did not have enough answers for Silvala. If anyone ever tells you you cannot play CEDH on a budget, this should prove otherwise. Scott had a bad beat with the pack trigger, but that's the inherent risk you take with that card. Once he milled his Tidesprout Tyrant from one of his Tasker activations, he knew he was on the back foot. Garrett's deck was really cool with his Jeskai Ascendancy build. Unfortunately, it didn't get off the ground before Folgers win. I do recommend you check out the build in the description below. The player of the game was Tim. Tim played Table Belize the best, and he had the spells necessary to control the board. All with a budget deck, too. The most valuable card goes to Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. Clearly, Folger's crux of the deck was his commander, and everyone was spending resources to keep it off the board. In the end, it only took one turn for Folger to win the game through his commander. A big thanks to Tim and Scott for joining us and bringing these very cool builds to the table. If you want to check out the CEDH Nexus, the link is in the description below. They are a really cool community, and they have a lot of fun. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.